So welcome everyone. We are gonna be interviewing three producers today. Two of them are online here. We're waiting for the third. I had to send an email, so sorry about the delay there. Thanks for hanging on, but we are discussing Viognier today. And the, we have three producers, two that have joined us are right on the screen there, Giacomo Sata from the Michele Sata Winery in Bulgari. Ciao, Giacomo. Ciao. Good evening. And, Ciao. Thank you. Buonasera. And Stefano Buon. Casali from Moralia in the Maremma region in the province of Grosseto. The third winery, third person will be joining us will be Elenia Barbieri from Le Palai, which is a winery in the province of Pisa. So all of them make Viognier. So, um, Giacomo, we were just talking about the weather in 2021, um, as I was in Tuscany and Chianti Classico and Montalcino back in September, and everybody said, all the producers I spoke with said it was uh, there was a really bad drought in 2021. Can you talk more about that, about the recent weather? Yeah, uh, 2021 has been tough, I think, for everybody in Europe because the, the climate has been crazy. And <clears throat> um, for what I, I saw in Bulgaria, we had a very rainy winter time. And so we collect a lot of water. And then after, after January has been very, very dry. In Bulgaria, we had two big rains, one in, in April and one in May. And then that's it until September. So it's been dry. And, <clears throat> and then we had a very, a very big frost who is, is becoming a very dangerous situation because in Tuscany, at least on the coast, we, we didn't have many, many frosts in the last, in the last years. And in, <clears throat> in 2021 and 2020, we had two frosts in Bulgaria. Echo, Elenia, ciao. Okay, Ele Elenia has joined us. Buonasera. Ciao. Buonasera. Ciao a tutti, buonasera. 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 Andrea is the winemaker of Le Palaie. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Elena, and who else? Can you hear us? Yes. Come, come si chiama? Andrea, Andrea. Andrea. My name is okay. Andrea. Grazie. E scusate, non riuscivamo a connetterci. Nessun problema. Benvenuti. <laughs> okay. Exactly what we were just talking about the, uh, the weather in 2021. Yeah, just to say that we now probably for everybody in Europe, we, we, we are seeing a lot of crazy, cr cr crazy climate because we had in Bulgaria two, two frosts in the last two years. And so it's, it's weird because we had minus, minus six, minus eight degrees in April. Oh, really? During, wow. uh, yeah, so, so it's crazy because you cannot even... Uh, control that with the fires in vineyards because it's too it's too cold. Maybe maybe Stefano maybe Stefano can tell us something more because in Maremma I know has been no very very hard. Um, so we are seeing this kind of stuff, which is which is incredible. And then this this dry climate, not too warm to be honest, because we had a very medium medium summer time, not so warm. So the, 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 the harvest was very good for us. Um, but yes, maybe we need to look at the climate with a little bit more um, attention. I don't know if Stefano wants to say something more. No, please, yes, go ahead. How have you noticed the climate last year and then most recent years? And, uh, we had a similar problem uh, as, uh, as uh, Bulgaria, as, as Giacomo had. Uh, plus, uh, after the, um, the, 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 the highs, uh, we had hail two yeah. weeks later. Oh, really? Okay. Well, this what, is what, it was really This is what, in, in April or May? Or? April. April, okay. Yeah. And the climate is really changing. It's not, it's not a joke. Uh, we, had, we had hail a couple of weeks ago in, in December. Never happens. A small hail, but we had. So it was very difficult. So we had in a row, we had uh, uh, ice, uh, hail, and last time we saw the, the rain was at the end of May, and we saw the rain again in the mid October. So it was uh, a bit problematic. Fortunately, as Giacomo was saying, uh, 
Uh, we, the temperature were not so high, it was not so high. Okay. And, uh, so the, um, the vines, uh, they, they survived very well. The only problem we had at the end of August, when uh, the temperature, they, they went up uh, a bit, but for the rest, uh, not a big problem uh, for, the, for the vines. More for the humans than for the vines. Okay, all right. Yeah. We can, we can deal with that. That's a little easier to deal for us on our side. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Elenia and, and Andrea. And, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. And our, our Vionier is uh, located uh, not in the lower part of the, of the estate, but it's located in the higher part. It's 450 meters on the sea level. So it's very, it's very high. So over there we have uh, a bit five or six degrees less than uh, than the other part of the of the state. So so it's taking a lot longer to ripen, I assume, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Elenia and Andrea, tell us about the 2021, uh, what it was like, or what it's been like the last few years. Any problems? But, uh, in actually 2021, uh, um, for us, uh, it was a very great year. Uh, because yes, uh, during uh, the um, in April uh, we have some problem with uh, with the cold, uh, in particular in one night uh, that uh, the temperature arrive at uh, minimum six degree. Uh, but uh, every night uh, we made the fire around the vineyard, uh, and uh, all the people in Le Palais make the fire like uh, like mm. <laughs> yes yes. <laughs> We, we need fire everywhere. Also in the forest, no problem. We <laughs> we fire <all. laughs> okay. just uh, just uh, for the vineyard, in particular for our vineyard, because uh, uh, vineyard is uh, the lowest vineyard in Le Palaie, uh, and um, during during the night uh, was very difficult uh, to uh, leave the fire alive, and so. We, we work uh, a lot, uh, but we work uh, a lot, uh, not uh, only in this night, but uh, for uh, every year, uh, because uh, during the summer, uh, we have uh, a lot of problems with the rain, but, uh, but uh, we, 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 uh, we took uh, just uh, two, three rain in the summer uh, during uh, June, uh, July, and uh, August, uh, and uh, we save uh, the harvest uh, and uh, uh, we wait uh, to pick up uh, the uh, the bean because uh, uh, because we prefer uh, wait the perfect maturation and uh, we arrive uh, to pick up uh, in uh, um, half of September. So okay. very very late for us. In general, we start right. uh, before. Uh, before yes, right. but uh, this year. Uh, for us, it's very, very good year. We wait uh, um, the, the, to, to put uh, in the bottle and uh, to to find uh, if uh, we say the, the true or not. <laughs> right. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, let's, since we're talking to you, let's start. I want to talk to all of you about your, the history of your estates. And, and of course, we're <laughs> concentrating the union today. But so you're late, but I, I, I've not had a chance to visit. I'm sorry, but I, I did speak with. Uh, Ginevra from Tenuta di Gizzano, which yes. is, I'm assuming, very close here, because you're in the commune of Picciole, which is in the yes. province of Pisa. So you're, you're Western uh, Toscana. So um, tell us about the estate, exactly where you're at, how many hectares you have, um, and, and why you decided to work with Viognier. Yes, um, nothing. The, uh, Le Palaie was uh, a very ambitious uh, prom idea of Angelo Nino Caponi uh, that uh, find uh, a perfect climate and a perfect soil uh, in the this uh, little uh, corner of paradise for us because uh, uh, we have a sandy soil uh, um, and you can find inside a lot of uh, salt and uh, uh, you can find that, uh, you can see that uh, in the past uh, uh, there was uh, the sea. And so uh, for us uh, it's so very, very important uh, because uh, the Vionier uh, put the roots uh, inside uh, this soil uh, that it's perfect because uh, the Vionier, uh, uh, yes, it's famous uh, to be um, a French uh, variety, but uh, really is from uh, Croatia, 
and uh, so find the same soil because in the uh, in the coast of Croatia and uh, and so here I find the same soil. Uh, Le Palaie was uh, is a, a farm of uh, uh, 20 hectares uh, of uh, vineyard. We have uh, also yes vineyard, but we have also Sangiovese because uh, we are in Tuscany and so we of we have, have, uh, have, have, have yeah. <laughs> yeah. right. okay. And uh, and uh, also we have, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also we have uh, Merlot, Petit Verdot, and uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Franc. Um, but uh, in in the past, uh, the, the the view of uh, of uh, the wine is uh, to make a very important uh, wine, uh, red wine, uh, like Bulgari. But uh, we are in Bulgari. We are uh, Valdera. Uh, we are Petuli, and uh, we have uh, to put in the bottle uh, uh, where we are. And so we we prefer to make uh, uh, more uh, more acidity wine, uh, more fresh, uh, uh, with um, complex in the nose, but uh, fresh in the mouth. Uh, and I think uh, we can find uh, in the in the in the Vionier, uh, because uh, we work uh, with uh, with inox only inox for a uh, uh, but um, uh, be because uh, we don't use uh, the wood uh, just uh, just because we prefer um, uh, conserve the, the the smell and the taste of uh, the the vionier, the the true smell and the true taste okay now we're, we're there. wine and the fruit, the fresh fruit uh, is possible find in the our Viognier because uh, um, we think that Viognier is a perfect uh, noise, perfect smell, but uh, is important. Don't don't um, don't have many many hard when uh, is is uh, drink uh, the wine and uh, we use only the. Um, the, the inox. Yes. Because we are young and we won't make a young wine. <laughs> <laughs> I like that I, I like that comparison. Okay. Now we're, we're, we're tasting your your 2020 today. So tell us, and I, I love the wine. It's got these real classic, you know, honeysuckle and jasmine, and they even got a little bit of like red apples in the aroma. Great freshness. So tell us yes. about the wine. How many bottles do you make? And tell us about 2020 that vintage. In uh, 2020, we made um, 10,000 bottles, um, and uh, we want to uh, grow up uh, with, the, with the bottle because for us, uh, Vioniera is a brand. Uh, Bottom wine. Yes, it is our top uh, level wine, okay. <laughs> and, and, and so we want to uh, grow up. Um, uh, an important thing uh, to 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 say is uh, that uh, uh, in Le Palaie we have uh, a very new technology to work in the cellar and uh, we search to, we search to use all uh, particular from um, the machine to separate uh, uh, the the green part and the beans and uh, and so we uh, we search to um, to leave uh, the beans more uh, more intact possible what, what is the elevation of your the vineyards for, for the Vienna? Uh it, It's not so high, guys. Uh, to, to 200. Ta yes, okay. 200 meters. Yeah. And how far are you from the sea? But not uh, not a lot, in, uh, really, because we are, we are at 25 kilometers uh, from the sea. Okay. Uh, but uh, like I say before, uh, if uh, also if we don't have the sea very very near, but uh, we have the sea in the soil, okay. we can find the sea in the soil. I would agree. So, Stefano, let's talk about your wine. Um, you're in the Marema. You're in a small commune yeah. called um, Roca Strada. So you're in the province of Grosseto. You're in southwestern Tuscany. Yes. Tell us about how your estate was was created and and how many hectares you have and about the Viognier. So. My my one estate uh, is the, the result of a dream, because I'm uh, I'm originally from Milano, 
Okay. And uh, I left the town uh, about 20 years ago uh, when I decided to change my life. This was the reason why I decided to come here and uh, transform completely my life. Well, good for you. Someone, what, was your, uh, what was your previous occupation? I had my own company in, uh, in Milano and uh, I work in uh, information technology. So completely okay. different from, uh, yes, yes, from the brand. Right. I was, I was a very good wine consumer. That, that helps. So, okay. That's good. It helps. <laughs> it helps. Okay. Um, and uh, we started from, uh, from zero with uh, this uh, new project uh, because the, um, the property was completely abandoned for more than 20 years. And we transformed completely the, 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 the situation, starting with uh, planting new, uh, new vineyards. But, and it was 2003. In 2006, uh, we, we bought a property on the hills. They are very high because they are 350 and 450 meters on the, on the sea level. And, uh, and we discovered a, a completely different uh, world. And uh, uh, accidentally, we, we found the Guionier. But at that time, uh, it was only 3,000 square meters just to help uh, the, um, the winemaker uh, which sold us the, the property to uh, work with Chardonnay. But I tasted the, the Guionier and uh, was a very, very good surprise. So I decided to make 100% Guionier only. Um, and uh, we, we start also to uh, plant new vineyards. And we discover that the vineyards of Vionier, they are planted on a chalk bank. We discover I, I'm not sure accidentally. What that, I'm not sure what that is. Pardon? You, if they're planted on what? We planted the, 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 the vineyard, the, 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 the Vionier is planted on a chalk bank. Uh, a, a chalk a bank, a bank of chalk. Okay, chalk sorry. Bank. Okay. Yeah, it's full of chalk. Uh, so, very calcareous uh, soil, and uh, we discovered really a, a very nice place for uh, for these uh, the vineyards. And we increase the quantity, and now we are increasing uh, again because we trust that this can be a, an important part for our production. Our estate is uh, 130 hectares. Uh, all the property, and we have about 14 hectares of vineyard. Okay. 10 in the lower part and four in the higher part. And you also produce one other wine, correct? The white, no, only the Viognier. Right. We, we produce a, a red, other right. four. Pardon? You have another, you have a red you also produce, correct? Yes, yes, yes. We mainly produce uh, red wines uh, based on the Sangiovese and the Syrah. Is, uh, is the main part uh, of grapes that we, we work with, with a small part also of Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, but mainly we are focused on the Sangiovese and Syrah. Okay. Now we're also tasting your, your 2020. Yeah. And um, tell us about that growing season. Tell us about the wine. So, the, um, This wine is made uh, with the uh, night harvest first, because of the high temperature during the day, we are very close to the sea. We are about 10, 12 kilometers far from the, from the coast, from Castiglione della Pescaia. And uh, we are protected on the back from the hills of Rocca Strada because we are in the lower part. And um, we harvest during the night because of the high temperature we have during the day. And on the hills, we have a great excursion uh, night and day. Right. can be also in 15 degrees or 20 degrees also sometime. Um, in, to, in 2020, we, we harvested with 12 degrees of temperature in the night. So it was uh, perfect all for the job uh, that we do later in the winery because we, we made the cryo maceration, is, is correct in English? That's correct, yes. Yeah, we do this process uh, a couple of days uh, or three days, it depends by the, the, the skin condition. And after we manage the alcoholic fermentation process in a very, very low temperature, we work about uh, with 14, 15 degrees Celsius of temperature for a long time. The fermentation can take also 40, 45 days. Okay. Is, uh, is higher than normal uh, with, uh, with this. Uh, uh, we, we discovered this, um, this uh, technique and particular the fermentation in low, in low temperature 
that we can have many secondary testing of the Pionier and we can have uh, more result uh, with uh, um, uh, spicy herbs uh, um, and with, uh, with some flowers more than maybe some uh, tropical fruit or uh, uh, citrus fruit and so on. Right. So we work in this way. Yeah, just tasting this wine, you know, right away I get the classic like honeysuckle and jasmine and the, the flowers that you mentioned. But I also, you mentioned the herbs, I get that a little bit. I, this has a, a very distinct saltiness in the finish. Yeah. That yeah. you don't always get in the yeah, yeah. But the, talk about that a little bit. It is, it is, it, is um, it comes from the, from the place where we are. Of course, the soil is, uh, is responsible also for, for, for this. Um, the um, it, uh, this one is uh, calcare. Yeah, it's, it's calcareous, but uh, there's um, um, how can I tell you the, the 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 condition for the soil? It helps also to have this uh, sensation of uh, we call minerality is um, because the the the, the vineyard is uh, is on the hills. They are called the, the, the colline metallifere. It, think, it means uh, metal hills. Let me translate in a wrong way, but uh, it, it makes the idea. It's very rich in iron, for example. Um, so the, 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 the contribution for the soil is very important for, for the Pionier. And um, also the process, uh, uh, during the, the collect fermentation process, 50% uh, is managed in the steel and 50% is managed in, in barriers, in, uh, in the barrique, also the fermentation. And uh, the wine stay on the uh, sediment for one year, 10 months, uh, 11 months about. And how many bottles of this do you produce? In the best years, we have 8,000 8, bottles. In the lower years, we can have 2,000 2, uh, bottles. Okay, there's a shot of the label. So, and we talked before the the, the, label. the name actually comes from Latin, Moralia, which means you said a great wall. Yeah. And Chiara Luna is, Chiara is my wife, and Luna is the moon. Okay. Like a lot so of. It's a romantic side. We, we, we must uh, make happy the wife. So, happy <laughs> wife, happy life. Absolutely. I, I, it's, you're a very, very smart man. So, um, Giacomo, let's talk about your Viognier. Now, uh, Michele Sali is your father, correct? Yeah. And he is the one that sort of introduced Viognier to Bulgari, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true. My, yeah, my dad introduced Viognier in Bulgari. We were in the mid 90s. And uh, actually, he was looking for something to blend. Uh, a Vermentino because he, he was already making a Vermentino, which is now a, a, a label that we make, which is Costa di Giulia, is the white we make. Right, and, wine. right. <laughs> thank you. And he was he was looking for something to blend with. So in that period, he was working to Ornelaya as an agronomist, right. and he, he was working with Sauvignon. With Poggio Legazze, who is Ornelaia, was making Poggio Legazze 100% Sauvignon. So he, oh. he had the, the chance to know Sauvignon and to plant a little bit of uh, Sauvignon. And then he went in Rome Valley, of course, to know a little bit more uh, Syrah because he planted Syrah in 91. Okay. And so he went there to uh, um, to Clap, uh, to Gigal, just to know a little bit more Syrah. And he met Viognier, and so he was impressed by this varietal that he was impressed because it's a very Mediterranean varietal. So he decided to plant, just to blend with Vermentino. In, in, and he planted in 97, and in two, 2000, in the first vintage, he harvested and he, he fermented alone, separately, of course. Okay. And he was impressed by the, the power of Viognier, the variability, and the complexity coming out from Viognier. And so he, he decided to make a new wine with only Viognier. So 2000 okay. is, is the okay. first vintage. Okay, and now when he made this for the first time, was he trying to pattern it after one of the examples of like a Condrio in the Rhone Valley or did he just sort of let the wine make itself and take on its own 
identity. But he he start, My dad is very. Hmm, he, 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 he is a, a man who uses in a very. Um, I, I don't know in English the intuition. Intuition um, is correct. Yes. yes. Yeah. So he, he said, okay, they they use wood to ferment and to age Viognier. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ferment and age Viognier in the same way, and then we will see. And then in that period, it was very popular to make these kind of wines, you know, with very oaky, very, you no know, hood fermented. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, the, the label. And so um, he decided to go in that way to make, Viognier has, you can make a very fat Viognier, very rich. Uh, Oily, right, right. So, and somehow is, is the style of Viognier and Congio, even if they are able to find uh, some some elegance more, okay. So for me, uh, th there are many many wines that I I look at to make my Viognier, and now I'm I'm started a fermenting Viognier also in uh, in concrete, okay, um, in amphora as well, and. Oh, yeah, from 2021, this last vintage, I had too much Viognier, more than I expect. And so um, I had more Viognier, the, so I fermented in, in stainless steel. So I had four different kinds of fermentation and I decided to blend them, uh, avoiding uh, the wood. So every year I decide my blend of the different uh, uh, fermentation I make. And so there is no a rule. So I, every year I test the different fermentation and then I decide how to blend that. Because it's very complicated to manage Viognier because um, he, 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 he gives you different uh, results uh, depending on many, many stuff or many, many things. So the way you grow, the, the, the quantity of grape you make, uh, the harvest time, uh, uh, the vinification process, right. the aging process, uh, malolati fermentation, yes or no, uh, on the lease or not. So right, right. there were many, many variabilities. And um, I like to make Jovirre uh, every year, looking at what I have and blending the things I like. So okay. there, is no, there is no rule for me, for me, for my experience. My experience is that. So the, the, uh, the Afra you use, is that from the producer Artevino in, in Proneta? No, no, no. I use um, Tava, Tava. Oh, um, Tava from, from, from Friuli. From Trento. See, from Trento. 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 Okay. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. writing. Go ahead. I, I, I like them because they cook a very high temperature and so okay. the oxidation is not so high. So um, the oxidation is in order to give complexity to the wine, not to oxidize it. So. Okay. Uh, I, I like them very much. Right. And they are I very you leave the skin in Giacomo? You leave the skin in? No, 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 no. No. Yeah. I press or with wall bench and then I I start the fermentation in stainless barriques, amphora, and so on. Yeah. And so when you use the amphora, you you just ferment the wine or do you also mature the wine in amphora? Both, both. And then in this period, they blend them. I blended the different result. Uh, so now I just did. And so uh, now I have my, my wine in stainless steel, 30 hectoliters. Um, I'm gonna bot bottle soon, uh, in January, I think. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've actually doing research these last few weeks on producers that are using Amphre. And uh, I did talk to a couple of the producers that use Tava in Trento. So. Um, is, is becoming popular, Tava. Yeah. Yes. No, it's, no, I, can, I, I was one of the first with um, Duemani here on the coast. Duemani sure. winery. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm writing this article and it's almost, I had so much information, I could almost write a small book. It's, it's, it's just fascinating to me. If you see someone like Grabner up in Friuli, you know, with the famous orange wines like like the Georgians used to make and then Cost down in Sicily, but there's so many producers now that throughout the country that are using it on all different types of varieties. So it's fascinating. See, it's a, a very different amphora from Gravner because Gravner has a very thin 
amphora. Okay. Uh, um, Tava is the thicker, so the oxidation is not so high. So you do not have any oxidation in the wine. You have an evolution. And uh, Francesco Tava gave me some studies that they make and uh, they demonstrated that the oxygen that flows in is the same of barriques. So, uh, so is, is not a big oxygen coming in, right. in, right. The, in the wine. And so is the oxygen that allows to an evolution of the wine, not an oxidation. Otherwise, Viognier, oxidated uh, Viognier, I think is, is dead because Viognier is so rich that if you give more oxidation, it's too much oxidation the wine is going to lose any energy so right, right. you need to be careful yeah now, can you compare briefly uh since the, uh Vermentino is probably the best known white wine from Bulgari can you compare the two grapes and the two wines I mean the Vermentino still has a little higher acidity correct compared to Viognier Oh, of course, Viognier, Viognier is not an, an acid varietal at all, at all. all right. um, compared to Vermentino or to Sauvignon. So uh, it's very tough varietal because it tends to be uh, fat and big and not so fresh. Uh, Vermentino, Vermentino in, in the coast and now is Sorry, very popular. But, but I am not, I'm not very agree with you about the acidity of Viognier. I, I I just talk because for us it's very acidity wine, and I I, I think that we can compare with Vermentino for the acidity. Uh, maybe it's a little bit different of Chardonnay of Sauvignon, but for the acidity for us it's very high acidity. We we pick up at seven eight of acidity, and we can arrive at the half of September without any problem. <laughs> it's not my experience. Yeah. At all, um, it's not. And um, if I look at Viognier in large, so if I look to Rome Valley, I I didn't drink any wine that is fresh at all. Is is not a fresh wine Viognier, uh, and th there are no fresh Viognier that I remember. Um, Viognier, for for what I see, for, and for what I drank, especially. Is very charming because it has this kind of complexity that few other uh, varietal has um, have. And um, from if you uh, want, uh, when you see near uh, Petri, may, may, I, may I finish my? Sorry, may I finish my? My then then we talk about the. Sorry, the, the, sorry because he asked me about the Vermentino, the comparison with, with Vermentino. And I want, I want just to say that Vermentino for me has a less, less complexity than Viognier, it's a different varietal. And, um, and we use uh, Vermentino because it's very popular and it's very an easy wine. Uh, Michele Satta from 25 years blend Vermentino with Sauvignon just to add a little bit more complexity and freshness to the wine, more minerality and more uh, aromatic part. Um, but when you say, Tom, that um, Vermentino is the best wine we can get from Bulgaria. No, not, 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 that's not really the best, but just the most representative. Most popular. Most popular. More, most popular would be a good way of putting it, yes. But I'm very happy that uh, Bulgari DOC changed from 2021 and 100% Viognier could be uh, Bulgari Bianco from 2021. Okay. And so I'm very happy because we are changing our mind in Bulgari because we are allowed to sell a lot of uh, Vermentino, which is very good, but we need to grow a little bit on the perception of the white wines in Tuscany. Yeah, because I see here, I have the 2018 in front of me and it's listed as EGT, IGT, Toscana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with, yeah. as of 2021, you, you cannot call it Bulgari, huh? Bulgari DOC. No, 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 it's an IGT, CC. Oh, so, but... Okay, oh, I thought, Basta. Okay. okay. I thought you said it could be a Bulgari DOC, huh? Sorry? I thought you said as of 2021, it could be a Bulgari DOC. So it could be, see, because we, we decide to make Bulgari DOC, Bulgari Bianco DOC, with the same ideas of Bulgari Rosso, so many varietals, so we we, we can make 100% Vermentino, but 100% Viognier, 100% Sauvignon Blanc, and so we right. are 
free, free to make the wine we want. Is okay. is the same of Bulgaridos. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we, when the other two producers, we had their 2020, I had the 2018, which of course is a little bit older, a little bit deeper in color. So can you tell us about that particular year, that growing season, about the wine. So, mm, the, 18, the 18 has been a, a medium vintage uh, for me. Um, has been very rainy in the springtime and then the, the, um, the summertime was warm. And so we had good wines uh, on the white wine, especially. Um, and the, that Viognier, I fermented half in wood and half in uh, concrete. I introduced, I introduced uh, amphoras from 19 vintage. And so this is, this is uh, still half and half. So okay. uh, somehow the same that Stefano makes, uh, but he makes with, um, with stainless steel, I use concrete, but I think the, the idea is the same to blend a little bit more freshness and a little bit more complexity together to make a complete Viognier. So that was my idea. And I, I pick up um, Viognier 25, 28 um, August. Okay, that's early. Okay. It's early. Yeah. As, as we wrap this up, I, I want to talk to each of you, just get some of your food recommendations for your Viognier. So, Elenia and Andrea, what, what, what do you like? And, and it, as specific as you can get, not just seafood, but, but any specific types of local seafood or, or cheeses or pastas or what do you think? Oh, we think that uh, we can uh, drink uh, our uh, Viognier. Uh, the, the label is uh, this V, because for us, Vionier is like, like we suggest. Right. Like we suggest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, no, no. Not, not only fish. Not only fish, with the cheese, uh, with the um, uh, prosciutto, with the... Yes, you, you can return at home, uh, take a bottle of V, and uh, you can drink uh, with uh, what you want. Uh, just for the wine and eh? not for uh, what you eat. <laughs> right, well, yeah, I, I experiment a lot. But with the cheeses, is it a, 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 a more mild cheese or a little more pungent? Or what do you think? No, no, no. Maybe fresh cheese is, uh, is better and not uh, like uh, it's better a cow cheese, uh, okay. not very dark in the mouth. And so, uh, um, we prefer a uh, fresh cheese, but also, like uh, Elena say, uh, it's uh, very good uh, with uh, all affettati from uh, prosciutto to maybe a fresh salami. Yes, um, yes perfect. Yes, and um, also, yes, with the fish, uh, yes, it's perfect, but uh, not only. Ah, it's and very... the meat, uh, white meat uh, is uh, good for the Yonier. Okay, right. Yes, it, it's very good. It's very good with, uh, in particular, a dish uh, uh, from a restaurant near us, uh, Fritto Non Fritto, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, uh, as, um, an acidity sauce, and uh, it's a very perfect uh, combine from uh, yogurt, uh, acid yogurt. And, and what, what was, you, I heard Frito, what was the first part? Is this a seafood? Or? Uh, it's uh, fried, not fried. Uh, okay. Because not it's not put in oil, but uh, only in uh, cook in uh, forno. In the oven. In okay. the oven. Yeah, right. Okay. Sounds great. Stefano, what, what are your favorite uh, dishes with, uh, with your vignette? I will let you surprised. Okay. Uh, my father is uh, originally from uh, Sabbioneta. It's a small town close to Mantova. And uh, it's a fantastic town, it's uh, the perfect town of uh, Vespasiano Gonzaga in the uh, Renaissance time. And uh, there's a particular uh, plate there, it's called Tortelli di Zucca, it's pumpkin, pumpkin squash. Yeah. Yep. Try the combination, the pairing, sorry, with the Viognier, with this uh, uh, food, is amazing, it's, uh, it's an emotion. Personally, I don't like this kind of, uh, <laughs> of, of tortelli because for me it's too sweet. But the combination is amazing, fantastic. That sounds really. great. There's a lot of restaurants here in the United States. Once it gets to be September and October, they have, yeah. they have uh, uh, the pumpkin, pumpkin the, uh, 
with the pasta with pumpkin and stuff. And it's, I, I love it. I, you know, I always wait for that time. Yeah. It's very limited, but it's great. So I, I hadn't thought of that. It would be a great combination. It's a, it's, a, it's a surprise. For me, it was a surprise. So yeah. it is a, a very good pairing because the Viognier has some uh, sweet sensation. Yes. And they, they are very well paired with, uh, with, this, uh, with the pumpkin there. And that is covered with these, uh, these tortelli. It's typical from uh, November, December. So, right. right. Sounds yeah. good. And anything else? Any particular cheeses? or? Mm, normally, we, we pair with, um, with the seafood and uh, food uh, cooked in the, in the oven, mainly. OK. Yeah. So. Right. And Michele, what are your favorite? Or Giacomo said Michele. Giacomo. Sorry, Giacomo. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, no problem. <laughs> I'm used to it. Okay. And uh, no, for mm, uh, Viognier is surprising because you can match with many, many food, especially the autumn food. Uh, so I think to pumpkins or mushrooms or many, many dishes in Italy with uh, some spiciness. I think to zafferano, saffron, probably yes. a risotto alla milanese, so it's perfect. It's perfect also with the truffles, with liquorice. So you can play many, many kinds of uh, uh, pairing because it's very versatile. And especially it's very popular with Asian food because uh, Viognier has this sweetness, this body can, can be paired with uh, sweet food, like Stefano said, you know, with pumpy. pumpkins is sweet. Yes. Tortelli, and so why not with Asian food, especially with Chinese food, which is rich and sweet, and they use a lot of spicing. So right. it's very I, versatile. I, I was about to ask about like like Thai food because like, Thai food, uh, of you, course, you probably Thai don't food. have a lot of Thai restaurants in your area, but in, in Chicago, no, we where don't. I live, we in don't. Chicago, where yeah. I live, there's a lot of them, and you can bring your own wine. So. That's those are some of my favorite pairings, you know, with, with Viognier. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It's very it's very popular. I mean, to 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 pair Viognier with that food. Great. Yeah, okay. Right. This was very enjoyable and a great discussion there. We had a little argument about Viognier, but but it, it worked out nice to get different opinions. So Stefano and Giacomo, Elenia and Andrea, grazie per questa opportunità. Okay. Buon lavoro. Buona festa. Thank you. Thank Grazie you so much. Grazie a tutti. And, uh, we, Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, and I, I hope to visit all of you very soon. We wait all in our cellar to, to, to try the Vionier and the acidity of Vionier. Okay, we'll have, we'll have a comparison. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye.